After a lengthy wait of over 500 days, China's highly publicized naval behemoth, the Fujian 003 aircraft carrier, still hasn't set out on its sea trials. Key dates that were once predicted as significant milestones, including Army Day and National Day, have come and gone without the carrier's debut. Furthermore, details about the launch date of China's subsequent endeavor, the 004 aircraft carrier, remain shrouded in uncertainty. According to the latest analysis from the Chinese military column Langzi Liaojun, both the Fujian aircraft carrier and the subsequent 004 aircraft carrier are facing a series of challenges. The electromagnetic catapult technology used by the Fujian carrier is entirely different from its American counterpart, making any form of imitation impossible. The Chinese Communist Party CCP, has limited capacity for technological innovation. Turning concepts into reality on its own is akin to gambling. The 004 aircraft carriers need to match electromagnetic ejection technology with nuclear power plants, which is also an uncharted territory the CCP lacks experience in. The large nuclear power plant is another major hurdle for the 004 aircraft carrier. While the United States has extensive experience in this regard, it is keeping a close eye on China. Russia does not possess nuclear-powered carriers to offer assistance. The slow progress and numerous challenges in the overall design of the 004 aircraft carrier can be foreseen. Furthermore, there is a stark reality that the Chinese military column is hesitant to address, namely the financial crisis of the CCP. In this situation, the construction of another aircraft carrier indeed seems superfluous, so news about the 004 aircraft carrier remain scarce. After the Fujian carrier was first launched on June 17, 2022, it began its assembly journey at a deep water dock. The focus has been on the mysterious electromagnetic catapult track and the ship's island electronic equipment, because without progress in these areas, the installation of other equipment would be futile. This implies that the CCP does lack confidence in new technologies, particularly in electromagnetic catapults. The three runways of the electromagnetic catapult system have been covered by large sheds since the carrier was launched last year. Although the sheds were gradually removed from July to September this year, there has been no announcement of public testing for the electromagnetic catapult. In contrast, the U.S. Ford-class aircraft carrier completed its first public test two years before sea trials. The stability and performance of the Fujian carrier's electromagnetic catapult system remain a question mark. The materials and equipment piled on the deck, along with the busy wheeled cranes and tower cranes, indicate that there is still a lot of crucial equipment awaiting installation on the Fujian carrier. The smoke stains on the side of the ship suggest that testing of the electromagnetic catapult system is ongoing, with frequent startups and shutdowns hinting at instability and challenges in Beijing's carrier technology. The absence of Ma Weiming, the chief engineer of the electromagnetic catapult on the Fujian carrier from last year's 20th Party Congress, is noteworthy. Ma Weiming's non-attendance at this key political event raises questions. Another critical factor is the arrest of Song Xue in 2021. Song Xue, the former deputy minister of equipment and former deputy minister of the navy, played a pivotal role. He was instrumental in the approval, construction of the Fujian carrier, and the development of its electromagnetic catapult. These developments suggest possible setbacks for the Chinese Navy. The Navy might be encountering significant challenges in developing electromagnetic catapult and interception systems. These difficulties likely stem from international technology blockades. They are also possibly due to limited domestic research capabilities in this field. There are also reports of possible anti-Xi Jinping forces interfering with the installation and testing of equipment on the Fujian carrier. In the first half of 2023, through aerial photography, it was observed that several crucial components of the aircraft carrier were transported from Beijing to Shanghai via aircraft, and then by large trucks to the port where the aircraft carrier was being built. Some analysts believe that this news may have caught the attention of anti-Xi factions. 
On July 21st, a large truck carrying aircraft carrier components was bombed shortly after leaving the airport, resulting in a catastrophic scene. What's even more dramatic is the rumor that the electromagnetic catapult technology for the Fujian carrier actually originated from an undergraduate thesis titled Electromagnetic Catapult of Linear Servo Motors. The author, Sun Jing, revealed on his WeChat that the thesis caught the attention of the Naval Equipment Department, which subsequently hired several retired American military scientists to create blueprints and process flows based on the thesis's concepts. However, materials that performed stably under high-speed operation were subjected to international sanctions. Rumors have it that the lack of stable materials led to generator overload failures during real-world testing. The connectors of the electromagnetic catapult and the entire launch structure also face durability and strength issues. This is a concerning matter, as a failed launch equals a failed takeoff, which could result in catastrophic accidents. Since the electromagnetic ejection is too strong and damaging to the structure of the aircraft, the electromagnetic ejection of the J-15T fighter is still carefully tested and not mass-produced. The supporting device of the electromagnetic catapult and the electromagnetic blocking system are also riddled with problems. Overseas media reported that there were many breaks in the rope during the test, causing heavy casualties. A critical factor that has hampered the progress of China's two carriers is money. Since Xi Jinping came to power, China has spent extensively on the Belt and Road Initiative, coupled with an expansion of military expenditures depleting the CCP's financial resources within a decade. China is financially strapped. If it continues to build carriers, it risks getting caught in an arms race with the United States, potentially leading to the economic disintegration of China and the downfall of the communist regime, similar to the Soviet Union's fate during the arms race. The Chinese leadership is well aware of this situation, and now they are ostensibly compromising with the United States, stating that they won't engage in military actions against Taiwan in 2025 and 2027, which would reduce military expenditures. As a result, these two carriers are being delayed. What's more, the problems that have arisen during drills with China's first two carriers have made Xi hesitant to challenge the United States. The use of ski jump takeoff on the CCP's carriers has caused instability for aircrafts equipped with heavy engines shortly after takeoff. Many within the Navy commented that the CCP's carrier-based aircrafts often experience accidents where they fall shortly after takeoff. During landings, there is a risk of arresting cable breakage, leading to aircrafts falling into the sea. However, these accidents have never been made known to the Central Military Commission. In 2023, Xi Jinping sought to engage in a conflict between the Chinese Navy and the Philippines, insisting that aircraft carriers must be involved. As a result, they conducted exercises in the South China Sea, but once again, aircrafts fell off the carriers. This time, it could no longer be concealed, and it was clear that China would definitely lose in any conflict. The news was reported to the Central Military Commission. After reading it for a while, she simply could not believe it was real. These are all aircraft carriers. How come there is such a distance between China and the US? She finally realized that even the Philippines might be too much to handle, let alone Taiwan. In March, an online post leaked the true state of China's aircraft carriers, summarizing it in one sentence. They are all junk. The first two carriers need to burn their boilers for 48 hours to start from a standstill, and the third carrier, the Fujian, also uses a steam turbine engine, taking more than 10 hours to start. The latter two carriers, built by the CCP itself, have subpar special steel, with insufficient strength in the hull's steel plates. The domestically developed Shandong carrier, which has been in service for several years, has spent most of its time in the shipyard for repairs. The substandard steel led to multiple large breaches in the hull, allowing seawater to flow in rapidly, rendering it inoperable. The Fujian carrier also experienced problems with the welding of the hull steel plates. Ultimately, the one that can actually sail on the sea, emitting thick diesel smoke as it goes, is surprisingly the Liaoning carrier. This is because the Liaoning carrier shell was purchased from Ukraine, and it doesn't leak. 
Even though it's just an outer shell that has been used for years, it is much more reliable than the CCP's Shandong and Fujian carriers. At least it won't sink or leak. The actual state of these three CCP aircraft carriers is quite dismal. Even the Liaoning carrier had its share of absurdities during the refurbishment process. The CCP decided to deviate from the Soviet design, removing the launch wells for heavy supersonic anti-ship missiles at the bow and replacing them with a convenience store. Just imagine, the place originally meant for launching missiles now stocks potato chips and mineral water. Is this an aircraft carrier or a floating supermarket? However, the official CCP news reported on this matter in a grand manner. With a hefty military budget, the Navy was expected to enhance its military capabilities, but it ended up opening a convenience store on an aircraft carrier. The Chinese people couldn't help but draw parallels with the Sino-Japanese naval war in 1894. At the time, Japan was initially cautious about the Qing Dynasty's Beiyang fleet, considering it had ironclad warships made in the UK and was Asia's leading navy. Japan was closely monitoring China's impressive naval vessels with telescopes on a daily basis. However, one day the Japanese were surprised to see Chinese warships' gun barrels being used to hang clothes, including women's chongsams and underwear. These details led the Japanese to conclude that the Chinese warships were more focused on daily life rather than military exercises. They believed that the Beiyang fleet was not prepared for combat. Eventually, Japan gathered the courage to take action and defeated the Beiyang fleet in just one hour. The operational capabilities of the CCP's first two aircraft carriers were not much better than the Beiyang fleet. In April 2021, a formation of the Liaoning aircraft carrier was unexpectedly intruded by three U.S. Navy destroyers, a scene that garnered widespread attention online. Many netizens shared photos and videos, making the scene a hot topic on the internet. The intrusion of American destroyers into the formation of a Chinese aircraft carrier was undoubtedly a significant embarrassment, and the military was not willing to let anyone know about it. How did this information get leaked, and the result pointed to internal anti-Xi factions within the CCP? Of course, this investigation result was not publicly disclosed. Some commentators view this incident as evidence that the Chinese Navy lacks the capability to engage in foreign warfare and instead resorts to intimidation of its own citizens. In early April, there was an unexpected encounter between China's Shandong aircraft carrier and the U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Nimitz. According to reports, American sailors on the Nimitz were seen sipping coffee and enjoying the activities on the Shandong aircraft carrier. Domestic netizens humorously commented on this event, joking that the Shandong carrier might be better suited for fishing expeditions at sea rather than military missions. They even mimicked the Shandong carrier's statement, saying, The Shandong carrier does not intend to confront the U.S. Nimitz. I'm just anchored temporarily and unable to move at the moment. I'm undergoing repairs. Please don't mock me. Entering November, the Shandong aircraft carrier, accompanied by four combat ships, appeared in the waters off the eastern coast of Taiwan. Unfortunately, the Japanese sea to the north saw the presence of the USS Carl Vinson, and the South China Sea to the south deployed the USS Ronald Reagan. These two U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carriers undoubtedly posed significant strategic pressure on the People's Liberation Army, PLA. In particular, the Carl Vinson Aircraft Carrier Strike Group, equipped with four Aegis Combat Systems-equipped Burke-class destroyers, clearly outclassed the Shandong Carrier Group in terms of tonnage and combat capabilities. The PLA had to admit its disadvantage and hastily dispatched three batches of six ships for support. As for the Shandong Carrier, its design and capabilities are somewhat laughable. It is essentially an imitation of the former Soviet Kuznetsov-class aircraft carrier and can be considered an upgraded version of the Liaoning carrier. It has massive boilers, a narrow hangar, limited range, and lacks catapults for launching heavy aircraft. Its primary carrier-based aircraft, the J-15B, cannot carry a full weapon load when taking off with a full fuel load and vice versa. With a meager 70,000-ton displacement, it falls short even compared to Japanese aircraft carrier Shinano from World War II. It doesn't even have airborne early warning aircraft. In a real confrontation with the United States, it would be like a sitting duck. 
The appearance of the Fujian aircraft carrier did not fundamentally solve the deep-seated issues facing the Chinese Navy. In fact, it is more like a modern version of the Beiyang fleet. Despite some technological advancements, it still falls short when confronted with advanced international naval forces. While the preparation time for the Fujian carrier has been shortened from the 48 hours required for the first two carriers to around a dozen hours, it is still a lengthy process that could potentially delay combat readiness. The decision to incorporate electromagnetic catapult systems into the design of the Fujian was made after the ship's hull was finalized, resulting in excessively long flight decks and flame deflectors blocking the aircraft's takeoff and landing paths. This could affect the efficient operation of aircrafts and may necessitate retrofitting with a third catapult. The presence of a third runway is impeded by the flame deflectors of the second runway, making it impossible for both to be used simultaneously. Behind the scenes, the story of the Fujian is more like a political drama filled with irony. The christening ceremony should have been an excellent opportunity to showcase Xi Jinping's prestige. At the very least, he should have made an appearance. It turned out that Xi wanted to celebrate this historic moment on the aircraft carrier with Mao Tai, China's national liquor, but what's arranged was champagne. Changing the plan was not that easy, and there were murmurs from anti-Xi factions within the top CCP leadership questioning that he was so picky. If they had allowed Mao Tai to be consumed on the aircraft carrier, it could have turned into a floating bar. Due to this minor issue, Xi Jinping lost interest in attending. Xi initially wanted to name the 003 aircraft carrier after himself, hoping to establish the Jinping brand on the high seas. However, he faced opposition from the anti-Xi factions within the top leadership. They argued that if that logic was followed, the first aircraft carrier should have been named after Mao Zedong, and that since Xi Jinping is the fifth party leader, it should be the 005 aircraft carrier's turn for him. Moreover, the first two carriers were named after coastal provinces, so there should be some continuity. The compromise was to name it the Fujian, as Xi Jinping was promoted to provincial leadership for the first time in Fujian province, which is the province closest to Taiwan, and the 003 aircraft carrier was primarily intended for operations against Taiwan, making the name meaningful. As for the CCP's fourth aircraft carrier, which is nuclear-powered and equipped with electromagnetic catapults and a displacement of 100,000 tons, claiming to challenge the U.S. Ford-class carrier, its progress in reality was very slow. China's nuclear submarines, such as the 094 and 096 types, are equipped with small nuclear reactors. However, to power a carrier of 100,000 tons, it may require as many as eight such reactors. If China wants to employ the two large nuclear reactors used in the U.S. Nimitz-class carrier, the CCP has a long way to go. What's more troubling is the integration of nuclear power with electromagnetic catapult systems. Electromagnetic catapults demand extremely high current and voltage for stable and instantaneous power output, posing a significant technological challenge for Beijing. Western countries do not sell advanced equipment required for military weapon manufacturing, making it even more challenging to develop its 004-type carrier. Furthermore, the Chinese military underwent a significant purge from August to September, with numerous officers implicated in corruption being imprisoned. This has left a shortage of personnel and even silenced military propaganda. Meanwhile, Xi's wavering stance on pro-American policies has raised questions about the future of the 004 aircraft carrier. On the financial front, the CCP is facing increasingly severe challenges. The Belt and Road Initiative requires massive investments, making military projects seem like a luxury. Therefore, the future of the 004 aircraft carrier is filled with uncertainty. Given the current management level of the Chinese military, even if a fourth carrier is ultimately constructed, it may turn out to be a high-risk investment that sinks into the sea. It appears that the aircraft carriers serve only the purpose of intimidating the Chinese population, driving the CCP into an arms race and contributing to its downfall.